Hello everybody, my name is Brick Bricky. if you are feeling fancy. Today is not a normal gameplay cut commentary, however, today we'll be about reviewing the new Jovian Concord Warframe update, DLC, expansion, whatever you want to call it, as well as discussing things like the new frame, the new weapons, tile sets, enemies, mission type, and so on. Normally, I don't do reviews like this. If you want really good reviews, I would go to somebody like Tactical Potato, he does a much better job than I do, but sometimes it's a little bit fun to go ahead and take the time, express my opinion on something, and really talk about some of the more enjoyable aspects of Warframe, because who would have guessed, I actually do quite enjoy Warframe. I also like the idea of reviewing the game as both a more veteran and casual player at the same time. I'm not somebody who has Excal Prime or has been around since the heyday, and I'm also not somebody who has thousands upon thousands of hours in the game. I have a good five to 600 hours into Warframe, and I play it somewhat casually, but I'll also, I do make a lot of content on it, and I do get excited for the updates. So I think it might be a little bit useful to have an opinion that is not a I have 7,000 hours in the game, been there since the beginning and only play Warframe type of opinion. For somebody like a lot of you who maybe play the game on your off time or only when you have the time and are a little bit more casual in the game. That being said, I'm still going to do my very best to provide a solid opinion on everything and really get kind of down deep into the nitty gritty. So starting off this review, I think it would make a lot of sense that we begin with the new Warframe because this was the thing I was the most most excited about Wisp. I was extremely excited for this frame and I'm very happy to see that it does not disappoint. Wisp has a wonderful flowing of abilities, lots of different ways to play her, great build diversity, and so on. If I had to use one word to describe Wisp, I would say flow. Everything flows to one another very seamlessly and genuinely makes the character feel a lot more enjoyable and always on the move there's always something you're pressing. There's always something you're doing. It's a very active frame. And it's an active frame that has a lot of reward. Her passive allowing her to be completely invisible while in the air is extremely powerful. Let's be perfectly honest, it's really, really good. Now there are certain things like firing a weapon and landing will of course reveal you, but just being invisible in the air breaks the game in a very fun way to where it can be a little bit ridiculous and extremely powerful. Her reservoirs are pretty fun. They take a little bit of time to cast and are a tad bit rough to swap between by holding down the one button to at least spawn some and it takes a little bit of time to actually get them out there but when you have them out the power these things provide is kind of kind of nutty if i'm being honest vitality haste and shock all have their benefits i would say haste is probably the best one but it's not a huge difference in power they're all really good tankiness speed and sheer crowd control all three of them are very useful, and the fact that your teammates can also grab them is also really, really good. The duration of them is quite long, especially with something like Prime Continuity, and they have a lot more power than I expected. Moving on, her two, being the Will of Wisp, is a very fun move with way more than I expected it to have. One thing I didn't know is that if you press and hold the button, the little, I don't know, specter or whatever you want to call it, flies forward at an extremely fast speed, much quicker than normal, and letting go of the button will teleport you to it. Now, naturally, if you press it once and press it again, you'll teleport to it anyway, but if you want to use it particularly for damage mitigation by pulling aggro, and to get somewhere fast, pressing and holding it is actually really useful, especially in certain directions since it goes in a linear line if you need to go up something or down something. Drawing enemy fire is already very useful, and the invulnerability frames you get after teleporting is also extremely useful, and it provides a lot of utility off this ability alone. One, taking fire is great. Two, long range teleportation and movement speed, Three, it activates with her three, we'll get to that later. And four, that invulnerability is not only nice for simple, I don't know, a little bit of extra survivability, but considering that Will of the Wisp does not have a cooldown, you can just hit two, two and have a little bit of brief invulnerability if you're in a really sticky situation. It provides quite a bit for the character and it's pretty great. Breach Surge, her three, is one of my favorite abilities because of the animation of it. But overall, this ability is, is decent. Uh, my only issue with it is the fact that the blind isn't incredibly powerful. And it's a little bit, 
I don't know, slow to cast. However, it does make up for it with the range and how it activates with your one and your two. Now, it get a damage multiplier when you hit enemies with this. They're blinded and damaging them and killing them will generally allow it to go from area to area, almost like a little bit of a chain ability. What I like the most about it, though, is the synergy with the two and the three. The two allowing it so that when your clone is out and you press three, both of you do a little bit of a breach surge. And you can use this to teleport to reservoirs, which I believe doubles the range that this thing flies out on. Now, the reservoir one is without a doubt my favorite favorite part of this because very often interception missions defense missions even sanctuary onslaught i'll place reservoirs in two different areas of the map and i'll just teleport back and forth back and forth back and forth constantly regening all of my reservoirs doing a bunch of blind which therefore leads to a bunch of damage which leads to chain damage which is just the greatest thing ever the teleportation mechanic is way underrated and especially great in something like planes of eidolon or in fortuna huge fan of that finally her four soul gate is decent though my issue with it is simply that it doesn't quite flow with the rest of her kit the thing it has the most synergy with is actually her reservoirs mainly because you can move around firing her giant eye of sauron death beam and you can sprint with it as well so you can move around rather quickly with this giant laser and it does do decent damage. It may not be as powerful as I'd like it to be, or maybe it's not a power thing, but more about it's a little bit finicky when you fire it at things. Sometimes it'll land, sometimes it won't. It's a little bit weird how it works, but overall, I mean, it looks pretty. It looks really, really good. But I am a little bit disappointed that it doesn't quite have a more synergy with something like her two, for instance. Now you can use it with your reservoirs. And if you do have vitality, haste and shock on, it will increase its damage by either shock, vitality and haste causes corrosive procs. So that does give it a little bit more, but I would have liked something like if you have your two out and you're using soul gate, your two will also fire a giant laser for the short duration that it's out there. Cause you can fire your two while using it, but it doesn't really do anything special. It just sends out a decoy. It would be quite nice if you could do something like that. I know I'm saying that the frame that's already insanely powerful should get more powerful, but Come on, it's just, it sounds fun. Everything else flows with each other so well. I would like a little bit more to the four because the four seems like its own just kind of death laser that we generally ignore, almost like Revenant's four, but it is still pretty great. Also, with space stats aren't that bad either. 200 energy, 150 armor, 75 shields, and 100 health. It's very standard and pretty solid. The armor is a bit higher, which is good. Health is standard. Shields are a bit low. But when you combine this with the fact that she is, oh, you know, invulnerable with her two, invisible in the air, vitality gives her extra healing, you got a lot of things to love. And, and you got plenty of survivability thanks to it. Overall, Wisp, especially with her abilities synergizing with themselves, makes her a pretty great Warframe. That being said, she is probably very overpowered. Now, I'm okay with that, however, because having a character extremely strong is fine in a PvE game so long as they're active strong. That's what I like the most, is that this character isn't press a button and win. They actually have to have you do something if you want to make the use of being completely broken and disgusting. And not only that, but you also work well with a team thanks to your reservoir system. It's almost like I love Hera. Harrow's my favorite frame. Uh, Wisp might be my new favorite frame, but before Harrow was. And Harrow, I always thought was a little bit strong, maybe even too strong, but at least I had to do things to get it. I had to constantly be casting my one, regenerating my energy with my three, buffing myself with my two, which rewards me by casting my one more often, and using my four to gather as much damage for an amazing crit chance. And I buffed my teammates. Was he overpowered? I don't know, maybe, sure. It doesn't, but it doesn't matter for me because he requires actual active use, and I like that. And I think it's very important to have active use characters. I don't want another Mesa that, I, okay, I love Mesa, don't get me wrong, but you generally shoot stuff, cast uh, Shatter, Shatter Shield? Scatter Shield? I forget how it's said. Every so often when it goes off cooldown, and then you press four and it immediately delete everything. 
it just seems a little bit less active. And if you like a character that is less active, that's fine. I can understand that. I mean, I play Nyx. I run around and press three sometimes, and that's my entire character. But I find more fun with an active character like Wisp, and I love it. This also pulls me into things like build variety. What mods do I put on? Another big up with Wisp. Now, I decide to put my Umbral Forma on Wisp, and I'm running an Umbral build with her. And I must say, it's rather effective. You do definitely want your Vitality Reservoir on, but I can get up with the Primed Vigor as well as the whole Umbral stuff to around 1600 plus health with Wisp. And then, of course, you have all the extra armor, and thanks to the increase in intensive or in uh, strength and the Umbral Intensify, that will make the Vitality, the Haste, the Shock, and all your abilities that much better. And it can get pretty dang powerful, especially with if you add a bunch of other stuff like more strength or more duration. And duration in particularly, I seem to really enjoy that one quite a bit. Uh, though, at the same time, this isn't a character where you build one particular thing. Everything works on her. Everything is good. The only thing that I might not take on her is efficiency, because she's got huge amounts of energy. The character can be built for basically anything. Lots of cool builds can probably be made, and that also adds to the excitement of Wisp. This moves me on to Wisp fashion as well. Now, this is an interesting one. On one hand, Wisp's fashion is great, and on the other hand, it's not very good. Now, the character itself looks wonderful. The design is great. They are very frightening looking. They have this very nice specter feel. The way they move around without actually using their feet as they move through the battlefield is very creepy. All of the animations of Wisp, animation department. DE, I know that since I'm a Warframe partner, some of you, or at least the community people, watch these videos. So anyone from DE I'm currently speaking to, give the animation department a huge pat on the back. They did a fantastic job with this character. She looks, without a doubt, the best out of any frame, thanks to the animations alone. It was primarily her three and also the Soul Gate. It looks fantastic. Just the way she moves around, the creepiness of it, super good. Going back to the fashion frame, however, the character design itself is very good. The Agile and the Noble animations are both fantastic. Agile, of course, is going to be a fan favorite for obvious reasons. However, everything else is still pretty dang solid. The problem is that the character is not very good with attachments or Sindanas. Now, again, to the DE people, that thing you put on her back, that little uh, two-piece cloth, Please, for the love of God, make it auxiliary. I know, I know, covering her butt memes. I get it, I know. Memes aside, and if I can put my memes aside, you know I'm serious. It ruins 90% of Sindana fashion. That is a big part of fashion frame, and you know how important fashion frame is. It is a huge section, and it is completely neutered due to that. There are only so many Sindanas that don't clip or look really weird on Wisp because of that damn thing on her back. It causes so much clipping. And even if I didn't want to put a Sindana on, what about putting a weapon? What about if I have a Gram Prime on her back? That would have looked fantastic, but we got this thing that's constantly clipping through everything. For the love of God, please make it an auxiliary. Let, like Valkyr's Bonds, let me turn it on or off. I know it was added afterwards later down in the development cycle, and it's extremely infuriating to have so much fashion potential wasted because of this extra piece. Please add that so that I can really get more into the fashion frame, and I know a lot of other people would agree. As for attachments, it's a bit harder, but I think it's just due to the size of the attachments. Some things don't look quite right because of their size compared to the frame. That's not so bad, though. Some of them do look okay. I found that the Embolus growth is kind of nice, as well as the... It's either Edo or EOS. I think it's Edo. Prime also looks pretty good. So the character looks great, and fashioning out the character by themselves is wonderful. But the attachments in Sindana, especially Sindana, need to be changed. Sindana, please make it auxiliary. I need that to be changed. Thank you. My, that, that is my two cents 
20 cents. Please just do that. Moving on, let's talk about the new weapons that go along with the Jovian Concord. The Fulman is the lightning slash archiplasmor assault rifle. I have no complaints on this thing. It is extremely fun. And again, the animation department, 10 out of 10. The ability to pull off the little silencer looking thing at the end and hold it underneath your arm, great look. Auto and semi-auto, just swapping them feels really good. And of course, having unlimited ammo is a great feel as well. But animation team, great job. The weapon feels very strong in both modes. They both have their own little thing for it. No complaints here. Love it, great. Keep it up. Fullman, fantastic. Moving on, the Comorex. This thing is really unique. I like the way it looks. I like the way it fires. It's a bit bigger than I would like. That's a little strange. However, I can appreciate it for the sniper rifle style, and I like the mode swapping. I don't know how good it is in high-level play, but I do like the weapon. Finally, the Cyanex is also pretty good. Um, I don't like how long the reload time is. I feel like I lose out on a lot of damage because of how long the reload is, even with reload mods. It does decent damage, but it has too small of a clip to warrant the reload. Either maybe make the clip 20 rounds or at least speed the reload up a little bit. Other than that, not too bad. The alt fire is actually quite fun as well. I like that. Oh, there's one more thing I would like to mention. The new NYX collection as well. Great looking skin. The helmet, eh. Don't really enjoy the helmet, but the Sandana, amazing. And the actual body part of the Nyx itself, amazing. Big fan, really nice. Now I'm sure you're probably curious what I think about the new mod setup. I actually have no opinion on them because I don't necessarily have them yet. Uh, I'm glad that there's some new mods and I'm glad these new mods kind of have a little bit of a spin to them. However, I don't know much about them and therefore I can't really talk too much about them either but they do seem kind of cool. Next up on our list, we have the Jovian Concord tile set over in Jupiter. This big fan looks pretty, runs through it pretty well. I like how it flows through the map. I like the lighting effects, especially the fire. I enjoy the new doors that have traps in them and a certain way to get through them. Really enjoy all the new things in, in the Gas City rework. I especially like the giant open areas with all the hanging platforms that you have to parkour through. I'm sure I might start to hate them later on, but right now I think they look awesome and I'm stoked with it. I may hate them later, but for right now, super neato. Big fan. Continuing from there, the new enemies, the amalgams. They are a little interesting. Uh, I'm glad they're not like Fortuna enemies where all they do is knock me down over and over and over again because that would p royally piss me off. However, they do seem a little bit generic, if I have to say. They, design-wise, look creepy as hell, and I'm a big fan of that. However, they do seem to be pretty standard. They die but when being shot at pretty easily. They don't seem to have any special tankiness besides the Demolists. They're, they aren't bad. Uh, I kind of would like more big projectiles. They may seem weird, but hit scan games in games or hit scan weapons in games like this are generally a little bit frightening to deal with because it turns into the one shotting everything and then getting one shot style gameplay. Uh, Anthem had a similar issue in the really high end game content. Uh, one thing that Destiny does do surprisingly well is that all the, or at least a large amount of the enemies are projectile based. This allows for the ability to dodge, this allows for the ability to kind of maneuver, and it also makes enemies that are hit scan, like snipers, much more frightening. I like fighting Corpus more than I like fighting Grenier because they have projectile weaponry, and it feels like a little more skillful to dodge. I would like if these enemies had like really large projectiles big ones that require actual dodging or hell even shooting the projectiles to deal with them something that involves a little bit more active on my part that isn't necessarily what i would call annoying besides that they do look great but they do feel like just corpus plus so it's okay uh mission type disruption this is interesting. Um, a couple of things I'd like to change about it. Now, this could already be a thing in the game, but just in case it's not, when you find the actual bombalist, or whatever it's called, the demolist, when you find it, it marks it, which is great. However, I would like it if it would mark it for your teammates as well. 
if you and four or three other people are doing a little bit of disruption and an enemy arrives and a, and a demolist starts making your way through and somebody sees them, I'd like it if that ping would arrive on everybody's map at the same time. Could be a little bit of a nice quality of life change because more often than not, I've found a demolist by myself with three other people nowhere near me and I try to kill it all by myself and I fail and it gets there and I lose. And it's quite infuriating. So some little quality of life to make the demolition a little bit easier to find would be okay. I'm a little bit disappointed that you don't just defend the thing for a longer time. It's basically just place it, kill the demolist, and then you're done. I wish there was a little bit more to it, but at the same time, I won't scoff at a new mode that's decent and not uh, defection. So long as it's not that, I'm okay with it. Finally, we got Fred. Fred, the flight alon. His name is Fred, all right? I have deemed him Fred. Fred the Flight Alon. You will call him Fred the Flight Alon from now on. That is his name. You will refer to him as Fred. You will bow to Fred. You will accept him as Fred. We clear? Good. Now, I have not fought an Eidolon before, nor have I fought an Exploiter Orb or Profit Taker Orb or whatever those orbs are called. I have not done either. I have only fought the Star Chart boss bosses. So how do I feel about this Ropa Lopa Dopa Dopalus, Fred? I like the fight. I think it's really fun. Now, I always hate whenever I have to do operator stuff because I have a level 18 moat amp that's garbage and I haven't upgraded it at all. However, even with my crappy moat amp, I was able to actually take his shields down relatively quickly. And the little bit of a fight with uh, hurting him over, some parkour, as well as a little bit of running around, shooting the back things, firing a laser, some ads. I actually had a pretty great time. I worry that I'll eventually one-shot the damn thing. Or not one-shot, but just make everything else a cakewalk as I get and shoot the back parts of it. But overall, I'm quite pleased. I think it's a really fun boss fight. The only thing that I would change is that I would like it if his giant laser beam after you charge up a capacitor doesn't instantly one-shot you. In fact, I'd like it if a lot of the things he does doesn't instantly one-shot you. And there's maybe a little bit more of a, you know, like I said before, a bit of a threat with projectiles and stem. The missiles are a good touch, but the actual laser beams are a little bit BS sometimes. Overall, though, as someone who has not fought Eidolons or the Orbs, I like it. It's a fun boss fight. A million times better than any of the Star Char boss fights. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Finally, we got one more very important thing. The Roomba. Best decision. Excellent job, DE. I'm sure you're rolling in cash right now. Whoever thought of this, so smart. Damn good job. Damn good job. And that's it for me. Overall, I'm very pleased with this update. I was excited about Wisp the most, and Wisp turned out to be the best part of the entire update. Everything else is genuinely pretty good. Some things I like a little bit of an adjustment. Please get rid of that damn piece on our back. Please. Besides that, however, everything else is pretty enjoyable. I The only thing that I would like to say past that is maybe can you make it? So that the little eggs don't rotate my character when I have my little reservoirs out. Or more so, let me have an option to turn that off. Go to the option setting and be like, reservoirs spinning around the character on slash off. I can see it on the top right hand corner of the screen. I don't need the little spinny guys as well. Other than that, really pleased with how this turned out. Very happy with the whole Jovian Concord thing. Good update pack. I'm going to be playing a lot of Wisp. Love this character. Keep making some like her and pat on the back for your animation team. All right, everybody. My name has been Brick. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope to see you on some more content in the future. All right. Bye-bye.